Hello, welcome to the 2015 CCNA course brought to you by Eduonix. This, um, this course will act as a study guide for the 200-120 CCNA exam. There are other ways to get to this exam. You can do the ICND1 course followed by the ICND2 or even before that you could do the CCENT if you wanted which is the equivalent of uh, the ICND1 but uh, that gives you a separate qualification. But we're going to be looking at the entire CCNA syllabus in this course. Um, so let's start off and have a look at the, uh, the exam topics. There's eight topics. There's operation of IP data networks, LAN switching technologies, IP addressing, both IPv4 and, yes, unfortunately, IPv6 as well. Uh, IP routing technologies, IP services, network security, oh, sorry, network device security, some troubleshooting and WAN technologies as well, very important in today's modern age. So let's get straight into it. Let's have a look at each of these topics in a bit more detail, shall we? So the operation of IP data networks. Now, I've got a percentage here next to all of the headings. That's because each of them counts to a percentage of the total score. So even though a chapter may be absolutely huge, it may only count for 5 or 10% of the final mark. And in order to pass the exam, you need to have at least um, a, a certain amount in every one of the chapters before you can pass it. So say if you passed uh, 7 out of 8 of the chapters, but on the, the 8th chapter you only got you know, kind of half mark, you didn't make the pass grade, that would be classed as a fail in that area and you would fail the overall exam. Those of you that have done other IT qualifications and exams should be rather familiar with that, but that's how it works. So operation of IP data networks, which is 5%. You need to recognize the purpose and functions of various network devices, such as routers, switches, bridges, and hubs. And we'll have a look at some models and some uh, methods and, uh, and some kind of common practices associated with all of those devices as well. Not so much bridges anymore, but definitely uh, routers, switches, and hubs. So you need to select the components required to meet a given network specification. We're going to go through an example specification. From that, you need to write me a list of everything you're going to need to complete the task. It, it's only mimicking what would happen in, in a real-world scenario if you're a systems administrator and your boss or uh, somebody in the company said, I need a network. You need to ask questions. They need to give you a spec, and this is what we're going to go through. You need to describe the purpose and basic operation of protocols in the OSI and TCP IP models. Not as, um, oh sorry, we need to identify common applications and their impact on the network. That one's actually rather important because uh, it teaches you what is going to be normal running on your network, what you want to allow, and what isn't so normal, what you want to specifically block, and, uh, and um, depending on what technology you have running on your network, what servers, what operating system they're running will depend on the common applications. You need to be able to predict the data flow between hosts across a network using different routing protocols and weighted metrics and things like that and identify the appropriate media, cables, ports, uh, connectors, etc. to connect a Cisco network device to other network devices and host it in a LAN. LAN switching technologies, 20%, it's a big one. Determine the technology and media access control method for Ethernet networks. We'll, we'll talk about uh, carrier sense, multiple access with collision detection, CSMACD, and that kind of thing. Identify basic switching concepts and the operation of a Cisco switch. Configure and verify initial switch configuration, including remote access management. There's going to be a lot of things on actual switches here and on virtual switches, which we look at. You don't necessarily need to set up your entire lab at home to do this because I know a lot of people don't have room, I certainly don't. Um, we have virtual tools that will let us do it, um, which you can purchase online, they're very, very cheap. We're going to look at a couple of uh, a couple of options there. You need to verify network status and switch operation using basic utilities such as, and then we have a list after that which we'll come to. Describe how VLANs create logically separated networks and the need for routing between them. And configure and verify VLANs, configure and verify trunking. Quite easy to do. Identify enhanced switching technologies and configure and verify uh, PVSTP operation. IP addressing v4 and v6, 5%. Describe the operation and necessity of using private and public IP addresses for IPv4 and the same for IPv6. 
in a LAN slash WAN environment. Those of you that don't know much about IPv6, the, the whole kind of LAN and WAN with one, one single IP address will become very relevant very quickly. Identify the appropriate IPv4 addressing scheme using VLSM and summarization to satisfy addressing requirements in a LAN or WAN environment. Describe the technolog technological requirements for running IPv6 in conjunction with IPv4 and describe IPv6 addressing. Configure and verify utilizing the CLI to set basic root configuration and the same for um, operation status or device interfaces. Verify router config and network connectivity. Configure and verify routing configuration for a static or default route given a specific routing requirements. And differentiate methods of routing and routing protocols. Configure and verify OSPF. Configure and verify inter VLAN routing such as router and stick. Configure SVI interfaces. Manage Cisco IOS files. Configure and verify EIGRP. IP services 10%. Configure and verify DHCP uh, on an iOS router. Describe your features. Uh, sorry, describe the, the types, features, and applications of ACLs. One thing I should mention here is configure and verify DHCP on an iOS router. Um, you may have seen if you've been doing some research that you have routers that are switches or they're switches with routing capabilities. We're not going to be looking at that as part of this. We will look at layer three switches, but not um, in this kind of context. Configure and verify ACLs on the network environment. Identify basic operation uh, or, or NAT. Sorry, of NAT. Uh, configure and verify NAT for given network requirements. Uh, the same for NTP as a client. Recognize high availability, FHRP. Configure and verify syslog and describe SNMP v2 and v3 and the differences between them. Network device security. Configure and verify device security features. Um, port, switch port security, ACLs to filter network traffic, and ACLs to limit telnet and SSH access to the router. Very important, a lot of people don't have it. Troubleshooting, 20%. Troubleshoot um, and correct common problems associated with IP addressing and host configurations. Troubleshoot and resolve VLAN problems, trunking problems on Cisco switches, ACL issues, layer 1 problems. Identify and correct common network problems in general. Resolve spanning tree operation issues, resolve routing issues, troubleshoot and resolve OSPF, EIGRP, VLAN routing and WAN problems, and monitor NetFlow statistics uh, and ether channel problems as well. WAN technologies. Identify different WAN technologies, configure and verify basic WAN serial connections, configure and verify PPP connections between Cisco routers, and verify frame relay on Cisco routers, implement and troubleshoot PPOE.